Do you know how long I have waited for this day? Can I just tell you how much I have wanted to tear this piece of shit apart and I haven't had the chance in five fucking years. Oh man, even the YouTube auditor's probably sitting down with a bag of Cheetos waiting for this rant to tell him to go fuck himself. <laughs> and you can see it by the length of the video, I'm getting my money's worth on this rant today. Five years, I have been waiting to explode on this asshole and I finally get my one chance today, so I'm going all out in this video. Fuck that, this is my first and last chance to rip this game and I'm going all out on this bitch. Now I know there are people who enjoy this game and they think it's the best game ever. Most likely this was your first Call of Duty and you didn't play Call of Duty 4, 3, or 2 before this. You're unaware of how badly this game is really designed compared to its predecessors. But luckily, you have me here to detail the ocean of bullshit this game created. <laughs> If this is your favorite Call of Duty game, I highly advise you to seek the nearest doctor and have your head examined because something is clearly fucking wrong with you. Before I begin, I have to point out a few things. You're going to notice that I'm going to be showing mainly the campaign co-op section of the game because when we tried to play online, all the rooms were either hacked or the connection failed. So I said, fuck it, let's do the co-op campaign and get some footage up in this motherfucker. Because of the age and overall shittiness of the game, we couldn't get a full competitive game and had to resort to this bullshit. And you guys also see by my stats, this is the least played Call of Duty in my entire collection. Well, besides Black Ops 2 since I never bought the fucking game. So, let me give you a little background as to why that happened, which goes further than just a game that plays and literally looks like shit. After playing Call of Duty 4 and seeing how successful the franchise can be, when you move away from the same shit that you keep doing, Treyarch went back to the same stale period as before, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later in the video. Instead of going with at least a different time frame, they made a game during World War II, which had already been done countless fucking times, and watch their Call of Duty sister studio break records with their game Call of Duty 4. When all the info for this game started releasing in little tidbits, there were so many things that made me iffy about this game from the very beginning. Dogs were being used in this game, I wonder how the fuck that was going to work. Tanks were being added to the game, and again, I wondered how the fuck that was going to work. So the first day of World at War, I rented. And no, not a digital rental that all the cool kids are doing now. <laughs> I'm talking straight up blockbuster rental. Oh hell yeah, that shit was still in business back in the day. The game was so fucking bad that I didn't even wait the full seven days before returning this garbage. I got this joint on a Tuesday. I had until the following Monday to return it. By Saturday, the shit was back at the store. Fuck this piece of shit. Which leads to the next question. How the fuck do I have this game if I return the rental back? Did I buy it afterwards? Did I actually pay money for this shit? Bitch, please. <laughs> My stupid ass friend going postal decided it's gonna be a good Christmas gift to get me this piece of shit. Much like Ghost, I never paid for this game. I did pay for the rental on like Ghost, so this wasn't 100% free. But I never purchased this shit on my own from a store. So I have it in my collection because he needed someone to carry his ass through the zombie map. Now, in the very first week in the series, I mentioned that there was another game that came out this year that kept my attention, and that was Resistance 2. Resistance 2 had the best co-op I had ever played at the time, and to this day, still has one of the best co-op games out there in terms of scope, execution, lag-free environment, and layout of the game. So when you compare these two side by side, there wasn't any fucking comparison. Resistance 2 was technically superior in every single way. 60 player online and not a cunt hair of lag. World at War couldn't get 12 people in a room without lagging like a motherfucker. Resistance made an 8 man co-op with 7 large scale maps which changed objectives every single game. World at War shoved 4 motherfuckers into a roach motel sized room with zombies. <laughs> Campaign, Resistance 2 told the story. World at War butchered the shit out of history to make their story. There was no comparison at the time. Resistance 2 was a significantly superior product to this piece of hot trash. I chose to play that. I chose to play a complete game instead of this bullshit. I played World at War multiplayer in total three separate instances. That's it. I played it the week I rented it. I played it again a few years later when I was trying to rank up and earn a token in Modern Warfare 3. Actually, let me not lie. I was trying to find a hack room that would allow me to rank up so I wouldn't have to play this shit. <laughs> so the only reason I came back and why I posted on my channel the one time of footage that I ever had in this game was mainly just to rank up to get a Modern Warfare 3 token. And the final time I played it was for the Goodbye PlayStation 3 series. That's it. Those are the only three instances I ever played multiplayer. I did play the co-op portions though, which we all know is the best fucking part of this game, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, to detail how awful this game is, will take a while. So, I'd rather start with the two decent things that this game offered up. Zombies and rewards for prestiging. And if you want to add a small bit of indifference in there, you can throw in these co-op campaign missions, which are pretty fun with friends, but the missions themselves in the campaign were fucking awful. Now, in Call of Duty 4, prestiging meant you lost your shit 10 times over, and you got a shiny badge for stupidly ranking up 11 times. <laughs> Here in World at War, they offered up incentives in the form of extra custom classes. Instead of being limited to five, we now have the ability to make up to ten classes if we prestige long enough. It was a nice incentive for people to keep playing this junk. While I certainly can't imagine how sane someone must be to prestige ten times on this shit, <laughs> 
at least the PS3 version, it at least gave you a reason compared to Call of Duty 4 that gave you absolutely no reason at all other than a gold badge. whoop de fucking do Zombies, on the other hand, that was the shining moment for this game, which is sad at the same fucking time. There is no question the best thing about World at War was the zombies crap you got to play after the campaign. Now, eventually they rolled out a patch that allowed people to go directly to zombie mode in this motherfucker, but that right there just shows how truly awful this game was. Your most popular mode is a lazy as fuck program zombie mode, and that was merely thrown in as an afterthought, and it shows that you just created one awful piece of shit for a game. No, really, when the best thing about your game is the bonus level, that just screams incompetence. Even the zombie map we got, is a piece of shit worth of programming. Think about it. The whole point of the zombie mode is to survive for infinite number of waves. That's it. You only ends when you die. There's no objective or goal in the game other than to make sure the zombies don't munch on your fucking face. The game only ends when you either get overrun by the number of zombies, give the fuck up, or in some cases have a total fucking brain fart from playing the most monotonous shit for long periods of time. <laughs> Granted, over the course of the next DLC packs and the next games that Treyarch actually created, they added more content to zombies to make it interesting for players. But let's just be honest for a minute. The only reason it received the amount of attention it did was because multiplayer was utterly fucking terrible and the campaign was a hot steaming pile of shit. So your only success is that you fucked up everything else so badly that this was the only thing players could actually tolerate. Motherfucker, people bought your DLC just to play zombies. That shows how fucking pathetic this game really was. Now here's an embarrassing factor straight from the Xbox Live numbers from Major Nelson himself. World at War is the only game in the Call of Duty series to have less people playing it than its predecessor during its year of release. In February, after the game was released, just three months later, Call of Duty 4 was back being the top played game according to Xbox Live numbers. And it stayed that way up until the release of the next Call of Duty game, Modern Warfare 2. No game has that distinction. None. No matter how bad Modern New Fair 2 was, Crap Ops, Modern Lag Fair 3, Crap Ops 2, and Ghost, none of them had their predecessor surpass them in playing figures. Ghost has been the closest, but it was never in danger of having Black Ops 2 pass in playing numbers. Now, in all fairness, there's a pretty fair number of reasons why this game is such a fucking hot pile of garbage. However, that doesn't excuse some of the actions Treyarch took after they released this game. During World at War's development, Treyarch was actually working on three games at the same exact time. In 2008, they released World at War along with Quantum of Solace and a Spider-Man game. Treyarch happens to be one of the largest individual gaming studios in the world. It's about four times the size of Infinity Ward at around the same exact time. So they certainly have all the resources to do three games under one roof. Doing all three games though, is obviously pretty ambitious in a year. On top of that, there was actually a great article a few years ago about this, how Infinity Ward and Treyarch never really got along very well. And that's in part due to the two owners of Infinity Ward feeling pissed off that Activision allowed Treyarch to make Call of Duty 3. Call of Duty was Infinity Ward's creation. This was their baby. So when Treyarch was allowed to do a spin-off, Infinity Ward didn't really care. But when they got a numbered game, Infinity Ward got pissed. Because of that grudge, they never told Treyarch that they were making a modern shooting game in Call of Duty 4. Actually, they gave hints to Treyarch that it was going to be another World War II shooter game. So when Treyarch began development of World at War, they got to the point of no return on their game, and then they found out that Call of Duty 4 was going to be a modern shooter. There was no going back. Infinity Ward was doing something different, they were doing something old, and they were stuck. The success of Call of Duty 4's online multiplayer had Activision worried that World of War's multiplayer was going to be subpar. Activision forced Infinity War to provide Treyarch with their multiplayer program. Something I'm going to talk about tomorrow in Modern Warfare 2 with the whole lawsuit and Activision and shit like that. Again, Infinity War wasn't happy about this and Treyarch basically rushed their multiplayer portion. They built nothing on their own. They copy and pasted everything. They made no efforts to debug the programming of Call of Duty 4. Hence, why the bugs from Call of Duty 4 carried over into this game. Treyarch was fucking clueless on how to make multiplayer. Holy and utterly fucking clueless. Hence, why World at War is so awful to play online. But what complicates the matter for them is the lying. Lies, 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 lies. That is all this company has done for six fucking years now. Lie. It's one thing to make a bad game, but own up to it. It's one thing to make a mistake in a game, but take the responsibility for it. Treyarch? No way in hell they would do that, because for them, it's always easier to lie about their mistakes than to accept that they're a bunch of incompetent fucksticks. Case in point about the line. When the game was announced, they told the media that the 360, PlayStation 3, PC, and Wii versions were all getting ground up development with no ports, which would have been a first for pretty much any game at that time. However, like I said, Treyarch is a large studio, the largest studio under one roof at that time, so it was quite possible. Was that the truth? Not even close. PlayStation 3 and PC were ports as expected, and the Wii version of the game was done by a completely different studio. So before the game even released, 
They were already lying and they got caught out in their lies. Instead of owning up to it, what do they do? Lie again. Don't worry, the PlayStation 3 and PC versions will see no differences than the 360 versions. They will be identical. Once again, another blatant lie. The PlayStation 3 version of the campaign has quite possibly the most unstable frame rate of any game in the series. Only Black Ops 1, another Treyarch product, <laughs> is probably in line with how bad the frame rate problem was. The PlayStation 3 version rarely hits a stable frame rate per second. During the test phase of the game, Treyarch offered fans a chance to come in and test out the game and they invited a number of people, mainly a bunch of stooges for the company who licked their assholes over at their forums. They invited a number of players to their studios. Guess how many were on PC? Zero. Guess how many played PlayStation 3? Zero. We? Yep. Zero again. <laughs> now, when fans called Treyarch out on their bullshit and said that they cherry-picked 360 players who kissed their ass, their response was, well, two of these guys own a PlayStation 3 and one guy has played on the console, so that balances the group out, and they all own a PC or laptop so they can always play on that. I'm not lying. That was their community manager's response. And I'll have more on their treatment of the PlayStation 3 players at the end of this video as well. Now, before the game released, a bug was found where you can get under the map on Roundhouse and kill people. In the first patch of the game, they fixed the glitch on 360. On PC and PlayStation 3, we waited 5 and 8 weeks respectively for the fix. And of course, Treyarch lied again about the glitch. They claimed it was fixed on the day one patch, but PlayStation 3 players were experiencing a different glitch than the one seen. Wait, 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 wait. let me get this straight, because this is actually rather comical when you think about this. In pre-release footage, people got under the map at a certain spot. In the game on PlayStation 3, you get under the map at the same exact spot, and your excuse is these are different glitches? Do you really think people are this fucking stupid? Do you really think people are going to believe that you fixed the glitch, yet it's something completely different from what we saw in pre-release footage? Going through the same exact glitch spot is something different? The best line was telling people that they would not allow glitching, hacking, or cheating, and they had measures in place to stop them from being dickwads. After Call of Duty 4's leaderboards and lobbies were all hacked to shit, Treyarch was determined to get things right, and of course, people glitched, hacked, and cheated. So the question was, what would Treyarch do to stop them? The answer? delete their stats. <laughs> Holy shit, what a fucking defense mechanism we have here. People hack the leaderboards, so we'll just delete anything that looks suspicious. Their defense system included notifying Microsoft and Sony to ban certain players for access in their mainframe. Xbox complied and would ban people from their accounts if they were found cheating, but Sony didn't give a shit. Why? Because it's not their problem to manage your security. You need to monitor your games. You need to control your population. You need to take the responsibility for your players and the security of your information. If they violate Sony's terms, then they will ban people. But the hackers are getting through your shitty security on both platforms. Microsoft did your dirty work for you by banning people because you took no responsibility for yourself. So, this is their security features. Let the console makers deal with it. Seriously, if you tell people you have a system in place to prevent assholes from trashing the game, you should have a fucking system in place. But of course not, because you're an incompetent bunch of liars. There was no security system in place. You lied your ass off and then tried to pass the buck to Microsoft and Sony, hoping they would cover your brain dead asses. The problems didn't stop there, and the lying certainly didn't stop there. How come the daytime version of McKinn Island had an invisible barriers on the PlayStation 3 version of the game and not the 360? The same invisible barriers that needed to be patched in the nighttime version of the map. Did you just copy and paste the old version of the map with the glitches? <laughs> Treyarch's response, there are no glitches, we have no idea what you're talking about. Patch comes one month later, fixes those invisible barriers. Why wasn't the high level boot camp glitch fixed on PlayStation 3 for five months? Why does CeeLo have a frame rate issue drop on PlayStation 3 where that was never addressed? How come that Panzer Schnauzer motherfucker rocket, whatever that shit is, has a different blast radius on PlayStation 3 from 360 and PC? Treyarch's response to the video proof of all these errors, it's a console issue. Console issue? Wait, 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 wait a minute. The console is messing up your game? It's the console that's causing your shitty programming? No, motherfucker. It's the console exposing that you're a bunch of fucking frauds and you have no clue or intention of making an equal product on PlayStation 3 and decided to lie your way through the shit, you fucking bunch of gutter cunts. And this is my biggest problem with Treyarch compared to Infinity Ward. When Infinity Ward makes their games, good or bad, the quality gap across the platforms was relatively close until they started fucking with the PC versions of the game. <laughs> Modern Warfare 3 and in particular Ghost were really awful for PC. With Treyarch games, 
the console versions of the games are glaringly different. 360 and PS3 looked and felt like two completely different games from World at War all the way through Black Ops 2. There's no denying the 360 versions of the games are miles better and every time they're questioned about their work and about their quality and in particular the process of how they ported the game, they lie. They cover their ass, they make up stories and then they get caught in their lies each and every fucking time. As for the game itself, <laughs> yes it's taking me this long to get to the game itself. World at War has massive problems, especially on the PlayStation 3 version of the game. Let's start the campaign and begin with another lie and fuck up from Treyarch. Little known fact, Treyarch doesn't know history. Nope, they don't even consult Wikipedia or anything. How do I know this? Simple. The day one patch for consoles had a little known fix in there that they never made public in their notes. They got four dates wrong during the campaign as to when events actually happened. The PC people were able to bypass these patches with hacking. You gotta love these motherfuckers. <laughs> And they found the original version of the game, and it had the dates wrong for the Battle of Peleliu, Okinawa, and Berlin. They had the US invading the wrong island in the McKinn Island Raid. And this is the problem with the game. Obviously, a video game is taken on a historical event, and there's certain leniency that's given to let a story make its narrative. Assassin's Creed throws assassins in historical events. Resistance Fall of Man replaced world wars with the Chimera invasion. You don't expect accuracy, but a game that is trying to recreate the seriousness of an actual historic war while adding fictional characters to the plot should get some of this shit correct. Bonsai warriors were massive waves of soldiers charging as a potential suicide run. The only time individual soldiers charge is when they use live grenades on their body as sort of an early suicide bomber, something the game got significantly wrong. German set traps for Russian troops in making towns look deserted for Russians to enter only to ambush them into mass killings. Most rocket troops never fired from above ground. They fired from low-lying bunkers. And they did this to make sure that they could hit the Russian tanks underbellies for maximum damage. Was any of that portrayed correctly? Absolutely not. Dogs, another point of contention. Dogs were being phased out as attack dogs by World War II, mainly because guns would kill them before they actually became effective. The Russians still used dogs to strap explosives to them to blow up German tanks. The Japanese used dogs in conjunction with waves of bonsai soldiers as previously mentioned, but they were no match for US weaponry. The US sparingly used dogs and only started during the Pacific conflict where they mainly used them as support dogs, similar to what we have nowadays, to smell and hear things that humans can't because their senses are better. Sure, they were used to attack targets, but not in the ways this game shows. US dogs weren't taught to kill, mainly because dogs we used during the war were actually family pets that were donated to the military for the cause. They weren't dogs of war, they were pets that were actually well protected and only used for support. Matter of fact, only two US dogs died in World War II, which shows how far away they were kept from the front lines. Does that show in the game? Of course not. Treyarch's problem is they have no concept of history. Instead for this game, they plucked out some historical battles during World War II, Battle of Stalingrad, Okinawa, McKinn Island as mentioned, Shuri Castle, the fall of Reichstag, but they made it seem like these events were linked. They made it seem like these events occurred closely together when that couldn't have been any further from the truth. Most of these battles occurred over large spans of years in the war. Stalingrad and the fall in Berlin were three years apart, as was McKinn Island and the Okinawa battles. Yet, two important parts of the Pacific War, Pearl Harbor and the two nuclear attacks on Japan, never made it into missions either. As for the gameplay itself, it's awful. The enemy AI is once again the stupidest shit you will ever find, except they managed to have the greatest fucking accuracy with grenades. I don't get it. How do soldiers have zero fucking aim with their gun, yet they can play such a perfectly accurate grenade throw from 300 fucking feet away? No, really. Why the fuck am I always avoiding grenades in this goddamn game? If it's not a bonsai soldier, which I already said was woefully inaccurate, it's a fucking grenades that were always killing me. Treyarch AI is the worst of any major shooting game. This isn't even debatable at this point. I already mentioned how amazing Killzone 2's AI was, but after three straight Call of Duty games, Treyarch's AI still looks the same. Their enemies pop out of cover in the same exact spots, and that's if they're taking cover to begin with. They don't move from spot to spot, and if you time it properly, you can see that all their enemies move on a timer. All their enemies will shoot and take cover at the same exact intervals of time. If an enemy shoots for five seconds and takes cover for three seconds, he will do that each and every time. Unlike games that built intelligence and variations into enemy attacks, Treyarch has never done that. Their enemies attack the same way each and every time. It's fucking pathetic. The graphics are horrendously bad, from screen tearing to environment barriers that made no sense to the repeat environments that Infinity Ward stopped using now that it was on a new generation of consoles. No, nope, leave it a trip to use only three tree models or five buildings and repeat mountain texture over and over and over again. <laughs> it's the 
epitome of laziness and incompetence, man. At this point, companies had already abandoned those methods of making games, but not Treyarch. Oh no, if you wanted something shitty and cheesy, they can certainly provide that, man. Speaking of things being shitty, how come when characters run, they look like they have a shit in their pants? No, no, really, just watch the animations for the characters who run with a pistol. It looks like they took a shit and they try not to smear that between their ass cheeks any further. What fucking human being runs like that? It is the saddest thing, and it is carried over to every single Treyarch game. Unbelievably unrealistic running. And while I'm still on the topic of shit, this game has three basic colors. Shit brown, diarrhea green, and a combination of greenish brown. <laughs> That's it! Those are the only three colors in the game. Every now and then we get a splash of blue, a dose of red when we see blood, but the game is all brown and green. It's monochromatic colors, somewhat match people's identity of war back in the day, but it's fucking depressing to look at in this game. Holy fuck, man. Now my final beef with the campaign before I move on to multiplayer is the outright monotony of this game. Aside from the tanks and airplane missions, it's literally just running from checkpoint to checkpoint and killing what's in front of you. Granted, this is like almost every single shooter game out there, but most games offer something more than just two missions to break up the monotony, Call of Duty 4 had stealth portions with McMillan, Killzone had large scale boss fights, most decent shooter games offer up something other than just killing a shitload of enemies, maybe on a mission or a timer or a countdown, whatever the fuck, but this campaign was the most monotonous of them all. Each mission was just you moving ahead and killing what you can find with no variety whatsoever, just keep moving to a checkpoint because that's how we win World War II. <laughs> Holy fuck, it was boring, man. However, the problems didn't stop there. No, 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 no. There's still multiplayer, ruled by the same green and brown colors throughout all the maps. But let's start with the one thing we will all agree on, the MP40. There's no defending this, but the MP40 was by far and away the most unbalanced weapon of any Call of Duty game. It tops all the unbalanced weapons by far and away in the franchise. There is no gun equal to this sucker. Between the damage it did, the accuracy it had with steady aim, the range this motherfucker had, what the fuck, it had better range than some of the damn rifles. There was no point using on the guns when this was the main gun to use. Throw on that drum barrel crap along with Juggernoob and you have the most versatile class in the game. Now there is no question you can kill someone using that setup. You can outshoot them or have better accuracy than an idiot using this loadout. Shit, I killed my share of assholes using this setup. But when you compare the damage output of the MP40 with the distance, limited recoil, massive amount of ammo you can use, this is the most unbalanced weapon in any Call of Duty game. If you wanted to get a good score and you wanted to try hard, just use the MP40. <laughs> Next issue, tanks. Since this game, has any Call of Duty allowed any unearned vehicles on maps? Nope. And you know why? Because it was a stupid fucking decision to allow it in the first place. Now granted, it's not hard to eliminate a tank at all in the game. Have some explosives, have some smart teammates, and you can remove tanks with ease in this game. The issue is that you had to kill the person in that tank once they got into it. Sure, they could be avoided, or your team could ignore the tank and find cover from it so that the person doesn't get any kills. But in a game like Domination or War, where you needed to be mobile, not only did you need to capture the objective, but now you had to worry about getting the other team out of a tank. You know, it's one thing to earn an AC-130 or a chopper gun. Fine, you did something to get that. Whether you got it in Care Pussy, you earned the camping in a corner, but you got it, and it's limited in time. You can't infinitely sit in a chopper gun all game long, where you can actually sit in a tank all game long here. And if you think that was a good idea to keep tanks in a Call of Duty game, then ask yourself this. Why has that idea never been used again? Call of Duty doesn't need vehicles. Let Battlefield do the vehicular combat on large scale battles while Call of Duty sticks to grounded fighting. We have never seen tanks ever again. Why? Because it was a stupid fucking decision in the first place. Dogs. Oh, the fucking dogs. I've said this countless times, but this was fucking awful. <laughs> Much like tanks, I get it. It was an asset of war during the time frame, but that doesn't mean it makes for a good kill streak. You know, in Call of Duty 4, we had the choppers and seven kill streak. You just needed to stay indoors and you avoided the chopper. Nice and simple. Hell, you could go gangster and take the motherfucker out with a mounted machine gun, RPGs, or even an LMG if you felt like wasting bullets on your accuracy. <laughs> but here, even if you kill one dog as easy as they were to kill, you still had more to kill. Hiding in a building wasn't always a solution unless you climbed up a ladder that they couldn't get up in this motherfucker. And since this was the war that showed dogs were no longer a viable killing tool, the irony of somebody using them to kill people became even more ridiculous only to be copied by three more fucking games in the future. Holy shit, the dogs still exist down the fucking road after this stupid ass game. Now the game design choices we know about, they were forced to copy Call of Duty 4's model. But a little creativity on your own would have fucking helped. <laughs> In Call of Duty, we had three, five, seven kill streaks. Here it's identical. Three, five, seven, including the same glitch where after you die of earning your final kill streak, you can call that motherfucker in 
and earn all your kill streaks all over again. Call of Duty 4 has the three tier perks. We actually have four with the fourth being a vehicle in this motherfucker. However, the majority of the perks are identical. Jugger Cunt, Stopping Power, Dead Silence, Bomb Squad, Extra Frags, Radar Avoiding Perks. All they did was rename shit to more useful terms back in the day. So copy and paste what Call of Duty 4 covered and add some shit stained colors and bad graphics. <laughs> But the cherry on top of the Sunday that proved Treyarch's incompetence was the DLC. Or more specifically, what happens if you don't buy the DLC? If you don't buy the shitty DLC, the game had no measure to prevent DLC maps from coming up in the lobby suggestions. None! If the map voted for was a DLC map and you didn't have it, you were booted from the room when the match started. Unlike Call of Duty 4, in which the game disabled maps from showing up for you, this game didn't do that. Either you had them and you can play those maps, or you didn't and you got booted. And since the ratio of maps was 14 free maps to 9 DLC maps, that's a 60-40 chance you will get into a room or not. Think about that for a second. 40% chance you will see a map you don't own and you will get booted. How absurdly incompetent is that? You mean to tell me these motherfuckers couldn't figure a way to limit that shit or control what people wouldn't or wouldn't see? There's no excuse for this other than incompetent assholes made this game. This is a basic design element of any game and they couldn't even do that right. There are so many little things I can get into but I'm trying to keep this video under an hour long. <laughs> but all the problems this game has overshadows the few decent things this game added to the series, like body parts being blown apart, the ability to select the map as you want as opposed to just voting and skipping some stupid shit, different grenade types and whatnot. It's impossible to cover everything this piece of shit game did in just one video. Now in terms of quality, this is the shittiest Call of Duty. There's no comparison, it's not even debatable. I don't care if you like this game, there's no argument against how badly it copied Call of Duty 4 took all its problems and fucked it over even worse. There is no argument how different the performance is across the platforms, how the DLC maps show up in lobbies, or how tanks were never seen or heard from again. Those aren't opinion points. Those are undebatable facts. This game earns the title worst Call of Duty of the console generation, and it earned that shit with flying colors. Well, green and brown, since that's the only colors this game has. <laughs> Now, one last thing to note, and the guys at Prestige Gamers will take me to task for not mentioning this. Prestige Gamers was founded because of Treyarch's incompetence. Much like how a number of people didn't like the treatment we got at Infinity Ward forums and left and did our own thing, the Treyarch forums were no better. Anytime the PS3 members of the forum complained about the game or about mistreatment towards them or unfairness such as the testers not being PlayStation 3 testers, the asshole forum mods would warn them or outright ban them. Instead of dealing with that bullshit, much of how things happen with the Infinity Ward forums, a group of people got together and they made the Prestige Gamers forum. The only decent thing that ever came out of Treyarch's incompetence was the start of the Prestige Gamers forum where people can go and bitch and complain in peace about how shitty this game was without any persecution from Treyarch or the shitty moderators. That is the only good thing that ever came out of this game. However, even as this game sits on the bottom rung of shittiness in Call of Duty, there is a Call of Duty I loathe more than this one. I'm sure you guys know which one I'm referring to, but when I get to that video, I'll go into the details. But there is a Call of Duty game that is technically better than this one, but that I abhor with a passion, and it will get one last treatment. But as for this video, it took me five years to tear this game a new asshole, but motherfucker, it was worth it. <laughs> Oh man, no need to mention what's coming tomorrow. You guys know what's coming tomorrow up in this motherfucker if we follow the sequence. As always, rate, comment, subscribe, and all the good shit. And never, ever again, will World at War be on my channel.